like a lot of the stuff, Mary, a lot of the stuff I'm talking about now with just the um, general interface things, right? Not 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 the specific project stuff that we're going to do in a minute is covered in the readme. Yeah, I was just wondering because I don't have it on my MacBook as of right now. What sketch? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. I'm just saying, like, the, the general interface things, just to get accustomed to the program itself, is covered in the reading. Okay. Um, but the actual specific assignment stuff, um, I'll, I mean, I'm recording now anyway, so I'll just leave it. Leave it be. Anyway, so you can adjust um, where all the tools are. You know, you'll, as you get more comfortable and used to it, um, you can play around with that. Um, sometimes, like, if you're on your laptop, uh, it'll hide a bunch of things. So you can just find if you see a tool or there's you know there's no tool up here that you're looking for over on the right there's a double arrow just click on that and you'll find one. Um, you've got uh, your rule your rulers if you don't see your rulers it's Control R. Uh, that also will show and hide your guides. All right, guides are a little different in um, Sketch. You know, like in the Adobe programs, if I wanted to do a vertical guide, I would come over here to the vertical ruler and click and drag a vertical guide out. In Sketch, you actually move to the ruler, top ruler, move to where you want it, then click, and that places that guide. It's a little, that way it's showing you exactly where the pixel dimension is, like where you are on that ruler to place the guide. I like this way better. I prefer this way, but not everybody does. But that's how that works. If you place a guide and you want to get rid of it, you just click and drag it up to this little square up here until that X appears. You let go, it blows up. Um, as you start adding objects, um, those objects have <coughs> characteristics. All of these characteristics on the side are something that apply, or that correlates to characteristics in CSS. This is all stuff you can mess with uh, in code. So what position does it have in the X and the Y? Remember on the screens, <laughs> your X and your Y dimensions, X being the horizontal, Y the vertical, um, your 0, 0 starts up here in the top, right, top left corner. On the screen, zero, 0, is always that top left corner. And it goes from there. Does that make sense? Positive down, positive right. Okay? Negative up, negative left. So it's opposite of the way you learned. Opposite of the way you learned your graphs in geometry, where, you know, in geometry, when we had an XY, we have an XY graph. The middle is zero, 0, And then that is positive X. Up is positive Y. That is negative, and that is negative, negative y, negative x. Right. This is how you learn it in geometry. Okay. On screens, it's very different, and it's important to, to keep that in mind. On the screen, right, um, still positive x going to the right, but this is now positive y. And so then up. Negative y, x is the one that doesn't change. It's just y that changes. Y flips. Why they do this? I don't know. I don't know. Um, they had to pick a they had to pick a dimension. Why they didn't pick the bottom left corner? I don't understand. Because it just confuses people. It confused the heck out of me when I was first learning all of it. So, yeah. but that seem pretty clear for everybody. Yeah. Okay. This matters for if like you're trying to. If you want to make a menu that slides in, right, you would, you know, you code your menu, you have your HTML, and it's all in the code, and, and initially it shows up, like, here in the screen, right, but you can set its position to be, um, like, negative Y, negative Y, um, you know, 200 pixels, right, and so it just moves, it'll move this part, whereas this would be, like, you know, this is just, y equals, I don't know, like 30 pixels, right? It's like 30 from the edge. Negative 200 pixels would move it 200 pixels that way. That's why it matters to know where the negative and positive. Oh, no, that's x, though, sorry. Yeah. Not the, not the y. y would move it down. So negative y would move it up, sorry. So if you wanted to slide down, then you would be negative y and slide down. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, okay. Um, all right, so, and then size, you know, how big is it in pixels? Transform, transform is just a word that means, you know, how can I change this thing? The 
about transforming things. Terrible Michael Bay films, right? Transformers. Um, things that change. Uh, transform is just a term that means that, and it's the term we use when we're talking about uh, anything in virtual space, like anything in, in the digital space, uh, be it two-dimensional objects or three-dimensional objects. If you take 3D design, you learn how to model, you talk about transforms all the time. Uh, if you're coding it, it's always transforms. Uh, so the two transforms you can really mess with are um, flipping along the vertical and horizontal, and then what its rotation are. There are other transforms, but Sketch doesn't really mess with those. There's other CSS transforms. Uh, opacity and blending, those are pretty self-explanatory. Fills and borders, just like in, um, in Illustrator, when we're dealing with objects that have fills and borders. Okay, so most shapes um, can be converted into SVGs. That's that scalable vector format. Scalable vector graphics is what SVG stands for. It's what Illustrator makes. Like when you draw with the pen tool and you're drawing a path, right? And that path has a stroke, but also a fill characteristic. You're drawing an SVG, you're drawing a vector graphic. Do you guys remember what the difference is between raster and vector images are? <coughs> What's a raster image? Pixels. Pixels. What's a vector image? Not pixels. <laughs> Still pixels, but it's pix it's not dependent on like a grid of pixels. So it doesn't have like a raster image, Photoshop stuff, right? PSDs, PNGs, JPEGs. Those are images that are essentially a grid of colored squares. It's very specific what colors need to be where on that grid in order to make the image. Whereas with vector graphics, you're dealing with mathematical formulas. You're dealing with a coordinate that has another coordinate and a, a line, like some sort of notation for a line between them, and then how that line is weighted between them. You know, so that those are the handles that come off of uh, the points when you draw an illustrator to curve the line, right? And then it can also have a characteristic of a stroke, and then if you have a family of points and lines, what fill do they have? What color exists between all of them? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, the benefit to SVGs is that you can scale them up and down infinitely without losing any quality. Whereas with rasters, there's only a finite size, there's, there's finite changes you can make to it in size without losing a lot of quality. You can only make, like, you start with your image being this big, you make it this big, what's happening to your original pixels is that they're moving further apart from each other, and then Photoshop or whatever your image editor is, is has an algorithm, you know, a, step, a bunch of rules, that it figures out how to fill in space between those pixels. It's like the, the balloon galaxy um, experiment that you did. In, you guys ever do this in your phys physics class in like high school or junior high to talk about how the universe is expanding? I had one person in my foundations class who did. It was great. This must have been like a. Who's from Omaha? Really? Weird. Wait, so balloon? What'd you say? Yeah. So in in, in my physics class in um, junior high, I had a teacher, and maybe this is because he was really in the science or really in the space. But he um, he we were talking about the expansion of the universe, you know, how it is that everything is moving away from each other, and what is that really like? A mental picture. Um, and so his example was to take a balloon. Put a bunch of dots on it, you know, deflated balloon, put a bunch of dots on it, and then blow it up. Right? So all the dots are really close together when the balloon is deflated and very small, but as you inflate it, they move further apart from each other, right? And then think about it as just being built. Well, when you enlarge an image past its original pixel, original resolution and pixel dimensions in Photoshop, it's doing the exact same thing. So those pixels are staying, cut, they're, they're moving further away from each other sort of, or, you know, relatively, and then Photoshop, like with all the empty space that's created from that, Photoshop figures out how to fill it in uh, based on some rules it has to kind of keep your image looking the same. But there's only so far you can do that in keeping your image looking nice, right? Uh, otherwise you zoom in it's going to look like junk. Uh, so, and then there's only so far you can scale it down and have it be readable, uh, because it's pixels, you know, if you make your pixel grid smaller, you're throwing out lots of which makes your image. Have you guys ever done that in Photoshop, like made a real pixely looking image, like really small? Bitmap? Yes, no? No? <laughs> All right. Let's try that. So for um, when you rasterize like, uh, the vectors, sometimes like when you're trying to yeah. I guess it's like Photoshop version, but like, 
Photoshop to Illustrator. Mm -hmm. Because then the vectors don't like transfer over. No, they don't. Over. Yeah, Photoshop doesn't really know how to. So Photoshop's not set up to deal with vectors. Okay. Not. I mean, that's sort of changed a little bit. They're, you know, they're always trying to make Photoshop kind of like the only tool you ever need yeah. because it so it can do everything. Uh, but let me open an image. What was your What's your question? Well, like sometimes, like I am, like I, it's easier, it's, it's easier to use like, Illustrator is within Photoshop. I need to be like I need to edit some things sometimes on the Illustrator file on Photoshop, but I can't do it on Illustrator. So then sometimes like transferring that over. Yeah, bringing it back into Illustrator, it's now a raster image, yeah. and so it's not gonna you're not gonna be able to mess with it like you would otherwise unless you image trace it, which just makes it into vectors again, yeah. and can really kind of mess it up. Um, so, all right, let me change to pixels here. So this image is like 517 pixels or something like that. So it's very fairly small. Uh, if I want to make it really, really big, right, like, uh, let's say, I don't know what my resolution is, 800? Okay. Let's make it like 20,000 pixels. Now you see how, seeing it at 100, how that like quality just totally goes away. Like you can kind of see how it's trying to fill things in there. And it just looks like junk. And this is hard edges. Like if you do automatic, it'll try to soften it to to make it not so dip, not so terrible. But it's still pretty terrible. Um, whereas if we try to make this like 30 pixels, because we're throwing out so much information do hard edges too. If you're throwing out so much information, you just lose the ability to really kind of see the image. That's how. So if you want to make really like really quick and dirty pixel art, you just take an image and then reduce it down, reduce its pixel size down really, really small. But then you can make it really big again. Just keep the nearest neighbor sampling. So now I can bring it back up to 500. And by keeping it nearest neighbor, what it's doing is it's just making those pick those squares, the original small pixels that we had, it just expands them up um, by whatever magnitude you need to. So that's a way to make really simple pixel art really quick. But that really illustrates the difference, I think, between raster and vector. Um, I harp on that because it's really important to understand the differences. Sketch can do both. It does raster and vectors. Okay, um, to varying degrees of success, but it does both. Um, but anyway, so really quick again, all your tools show up here on the top, uh, your workspace is in the middle, your organization of your files are on the left, and the characteristics of the object you have selected show up on the right. Okay? All right. There's a plugin we will be using called Craft, but we're not going to mess with it today, so I will talk about it later, but it is really, really good, useful pro, um, uh, plugin. So, all right, let's start our, um, let's, let me close Photoshop real quick. All right, let's come back to sketch. Let's start our style guide. Um, so on this style guide, um, we're going to set up an artboard. Um, our artboard is going to have the characteristics of uh, being 1440 wide, which is kind of a default, um, kind of like middle of the road, um, average resolution size. Um, and then however tall you need it to be as you're, as you're working on things. So you can keep making it bigger. If you click on the artboard name, it gives you transform handles so that you can scale it up and down. Um, so as you need to make more space, uh, you can do that. But I will start here in a new file just to kind of show you guys what I mean. Um, so starting with a blank file, um, you want to create an artboard. That's also your shortcut is A. Uh, but you can go to insert artboard. Over here on the right, after you do that, you're going to have um, all of your different um, types of artboards you can make right now. So there's all the Apple devices, uh, material design, that's Google, so Android stuff, responsive web things, you know, desktop, mobile, tablet, uh, desktop HD. Desktop HD is actually what we're going to use. Paper size and custom. I don't have anything in custom. So you want responsive web, desktop HD. Click on that. It will full screen it for you. So right now it doesn't look like there's an artboard, but there is an artboard. And then control, command, sorry, command and your mouse wheel will zoom you in and out. 
or you can just use your two um, pinch and zoom on your trackpad. That works too. Two finger um, on the trackpad works to sort of pan, or spacebar gets you a little Mickey Mouse glove and you can grab and drag it. All right? Is it Mickey Mouse or is it four? Nope, it's got five fingers, so it's not Mickey Mouse anymore. Long time ago, it used to be Mickey Mouse. It was just, you know, it was the three fingers and the thumb and the little lines for the glove. Um, all right. Um, some quick keyboard shortcuts for zooming in and moving around. Um, so Command 1 will fill your workspace and still show you the edges. Command 2 will also do the same thing, but Command 2 will focus, like if I just have a thing here, Command 2 will focus on whatever I have selected, whereas Command 1 just zooms out to show everything. Uh, Command 0 um, will also zoom in to 100%. Uh, so like Command 3 like whatever bird item you draw? Command 3 doesn't do anything as far as I know. No, center selection. It centers whatever you have selected. Yeah. So if I'm like way over here and I select something, you know, on there, just hit Command 3 and it will put it in the middle. Sorry. Okay. Uh, let's fill our workspace here. So I know that I'm going to need more vertical space, so I'm just going to go ahead and drag it out a little bit. Um, this is what we're going to start with. Desktop HD. I'm going to double click the name over here on my organizational window and just call it style guide. Um, if you click on this drop down up here at the top, that will expand the number of pages that you have. Um, page one, I would also like you guys to be a little more explicit um, with your naming of things. So page one, I'm going to call front end framework. And our style guide is going to have three artboards in it. You know, uh, or I'm sorry, our front end framework can have three artboards, style guide, UI elements, miscellaneous things. Okay? Well, we'll start with our style guide. Um, really, it's up to you. You just need, like, it's up to you what things should look like, um, but you need certain characteristics. You need a palette of, of colors, uh, you need a, um, examples of typography, and you need icons for this. Um, the typography needs to be a web font, not just any font you have on your um, laptop. So I suggest Google Fonts. Um, you can just Google web fonts and see what else shows up. So it's Google Fonts, um, CSS font stack, <clears throat> I think would be okay, I guess. I've never really used it. Ugh. I don't know. Google Fonts is a really good site. I would just use Google Fonts. Stick with Google Fonts. Don't mess around with it too much. Um, you know, I tend to go with Open Sans a lot, or Roboto. Um, so uh, you just want to make this look nice, usually, um, as nice as you can. Um, don't just throw things up there. It's like on the example I have for you guys. You know, try to style guide, color palette. Things are organized. Things are spaced well. Um, so we'll just go off of this. I'll make something similar. Um, so T brings up your text. Um, <coughs> if you just click, it'll place a text box for you. Uh, although it looks like it's glitching out like crazy for some reason. Okay. Text. Um, Random and Grotesque is a web font, but we're not going to. It's the, the font that we use in the department. We're going to go with Open Sans, though. Um, if you... Just click on it as an object. Can I scale it up? Yeah, it's not actually scaling up, is it? Nope, it's not scaling up. Is it just when I drag a box? Nope. You said build a vector. Oh, I guess not. You used to be able to like just by hand scale those things up, I thought. Anyway. Do I need to hold control? Yep. Tab. No, it's not alt. Nope. Nope. Oh, huh, that's weird. I used to think you could do that for some reason. Nope, okay, sorry. I'm just messing around with it, trying to get it to do something. Okay. Um, so yeah, it'll if you just click, um, hit T and click, it will fill it in with something for you, um, which is totally fine. Um, but this is going to be, I'm going to call it style guide. I know it's super tiny. I'm going to make it really big here in a second. Uh, escape to get out of it when you're done. Um, if you just hit enter, style guide, enter, it just goes to a new line. Okay, and it lets you type some more stuff. So if you're done typing and you want to you know, get out of typing mode, just hit escape. 
and then it becomes an object that you can manipulate. Um, let me pull this out a little bit. Yep. Can I not make you bigger? Oh, I thought I could. That's weird. All right, never mind. Um, all right, so style guide. It's just cutting it off like crazy over there. Give us some more space. There we go. So the style guide here. Um, so font size. You know, I want something a little gigantic. Hit that one. Um, it's really a bit of a bummer. Yeah, you could try 200. See how big that gets. Uh, I would recommend aligning things. You'll notice that I accidentally dragged my um, my. You can drag your ruler bar. You know, if you want to like align your zero to the center or something. Uh, if that happens, uh, you know, you mess up your rulers. Just double click over here in the box, and that will reset your zero, your zeros to the edges of your artboard. Okay. Anytime you select another artboard, it will reset your ruler for you. So if I have an artboard here, notice zero is now there and there because this is my active artboard. That makes sense for everybody. All right. Okay. Style guide. Um, Something that you need to do, or that I, I, I really, really want you to do, is set up your document colors for your palette, or for your um, set up your palette for your documents. So you need to pick some grays that you want to have. You need some primary colors, secondary colors, uh, alert colors, that kind of thing. I go with really simple things generally when I'm building these, but I mean, you think about what colors you want to use. Um, this style guide will change. This kind of a style guide changes for every website that you work on. If you do a style guide for your website. I recommend it. Uh, when I do style, when I do websites for clients, I always make style guides uh, because I'm not always going to be there to work on the site for them and add new features. This is something you would give them so that whoever works on it next has sort of a, a design bible to go by. You know, and, and something they can refer to and be like, "Oh, these are the actual colors he used." So I need to make sure that this is what I worked on, or this is how I do it. Does that make sense, everybody? It's it's like something for them to refer to, right? Yeah. That you should keep in mind? No, just set it up any way you want. Think of a personal site or something. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm just going to go off of the colors that are already here. But um, so I'm going to use I think this, this light gray. Um, but to set up document colors, you can just click and drag them down. Or whatever color you have active right now. Just hit the plus, and it will create a little swatch down the floor. Right, so you can either just drag it down there, or you know, hit plus. You can also drag and rearrange them in here to keep them organized. Right. If you want to take one off, just drag it and drop it over here. Cool. All right. All right. So I'm going to use this gray. Uh, I'm going to use this gray, and I'm going to use that gray. And I'm probably going to use that red and that blue. And I'll probably use that orange and that green. Those are They're probably going to be my colors, but we'll see. I might add some more. Um, all right, style guide is going to look like that. Um, you have a couple different font types that you can use generally with most, most modern web fonts. Um, I like sort of the light ones for these headers. Um, if this gray is too dark, you can make it lighter. If you do make it lighter, try to remember to add that color to your palette so that you have it so that you can revert to. The main thing is to keep all of your elements consistent. Okay, um, But this is just the name of my style guide, so it's not that big of a deal right now. All right, style guide. Um, oops. Am I not actually recording? I thought I was. I am recording. Okay. Where'd my other one go? Oh, it's. Yeah, it's over here. All right. Uh, So style guide, 
Um, then we're going to grab our color palette. I always forget palette. Palette? Yeah, it is palette. Okay. Um, color palette. And this size, of course, is going to be much smaller. And darker, but darker. smaller than that. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so something that's really nice about Sketch is that if you need to know how much space is between objects, just hold Option, like select the object that you want to know, hold Option, and your smart guides start to show up. So then you can just mouse over things and go, oh, that's, that's that many pixels away from it. Um, text is always going to be a little different because you have line height on text, which gives you margin at the top and the bottom. All right, if you want to change that, you can select that text object and come over and mess with the line height. So right now my line height for my 200 font size is 273. Sometimes I like to just make these the same. So now it should be a little tighter. That gives me more accurate um, pixel differences between them, even though this one is like less than maybe. Yeah, that's closer. So that gets closer. So there's really like, perceptually, there's about, there's a little around 85 pixels between the two of them. Um, I will harp like crazy on your spacing and your alignments. Okay? Make them consistent. I don't want like 63 pixels of spacing between this element, 48 pixels of spacing between that element. You know, give me 20. Give me 30. Give me pick an increment and, and work on that. You know, pick a minimum. Generally I say pick a minimum. Like what's the smallest amount of space you want between two items? Usually 10 to 12 pixels. I wouldn't really go much smaller than that. And then do increments of that, right? Be it one and a half. Just try to think in terms of like REMs or something. You know, one and a half of it, 1.25 of it, 1.75 of it. Just make it very consistent. Alright? If you don't make it consistent, visually it won't be consistent. And it will look wrong, and I will see it. I harp on it like crazy. I really, really do. I've made lots of anger gifts about spacing and alignment, and I don't want to have to share them with you. Um, but they're fun. So, all right, uh, color palette. Actually, let's make it a little darker. We'll go with that. Color palette. It's still a little gigantic. Go ahead and make it smaller. Okay. Color palette. So if I want to align these two, I mean they're already aligned, but maybe I'm like over here and um, generally if you just grab something and kind of bring it over, it will snap, it will show you. Um, you can also like use your arrow keys to kind of do the alignment for it. Um, but if for some reason you can't get it aligned, you can just grab, like select both items and then come over here to your align tools up at the top and then pick an alignment type. So I want that to align there. Usually it's going to align your small item to your big item. Um, like this style guide, I want to be in the middle of my space, right? So now I can launch it to the middle of my space, although I really don't want it in the middle of my space. I kind of want to set a gutter. So let's, let's kind of set up our document here. Let's go, um, let's put guides at 50 pixels. We'll call it, yeah, we'll do 50 pixels. Just zoom in so you can get smaller increments and snap to it. And then 1440 is my document edge, so 1390 would be where my 50 would be on this side. Um, unfortunately, Sketch does not do the thing where um, Illustrator does or Photoshop where you can make a guide in a specific dimension. You can just open up a box and type in where you, exactly where you want that guide to be. You have, do have to like drag it, or, you know, find it on the ruler and then place it. Um, all right, so I've got. Did I just place one there? I did. I'm gonna get rid of it, drag it, get rid of it. All right, there's my guide. Let's go 50. Um, you just click in the ruler. It's like I'm moving it in the ruler to try to align it. Dang it, come on. Okay. 
There we go. So I'm just clicking in the in the ruler. All right. Um, okay. So let's align these guys. They aligned like that, and then I will just by hand drag it. If you hold Shift, it constrains to the axis, just like in Photoshop. All right. Um, let's draw. Let's draw our squares. Um, insert shape rectangle. So it's R on the keyboard. Um, you don't have to do squares. If you hold shift, you can get your square, though. Um, you can do circles. I don't care what your swatches look like, what shape your swatches take. Right? Um, squares are just easy, so I tend to do squares. Um, uh, so I have 50 pixels here, or I guess 60. If you hold shift, you'll do increments of 10. You'll move things in increments of 10. If you just move the arrow, you do ones. So 50 there, 30 here. So I'm going to move this. Oops, 50. Grab this box and move it to 25. All right, so I'm doing increments, right? 50 here, so twice as much space here as there is here. Um, so uh, swatch, I'm gonna then click and drag it out. These will be my two um, primary colors. Uh, notice it comes by default with fill and um, uh, border. I am gonna turn off borders for now, um, but I am gonna activate my fills. Uh, these are my primary colors. Ooh, I actually really hate that red. Never mind. Um, I'd like a slightly orange or red. Let's tone it down just a little bit. All right, that is going to be my primary color. And then let's see what my blue looks like. Eh, blue's okay. We'll pick that blue. So those would be my two primary colors. Um, I do want labels for these things. So uh, again, the type, um, we'll call this uh, primary colors. Um, yeah, range it, I think. Up here. And we're going to go with light. And much smaller, 14. Yeah, 18. 18 is good. Um, 25. And let's. What do we have here? 16. So let's actually go like 10. There. It's 10 space. Um, so then I'm going to drag this guy down just so it keeps the characteristics. 10. And then this will be the label for this one. So um, for your labels, I just want the hex, um, the actual hex value of that color. Okay, so you can just find it. Uh, 4A90E2 actually use that color a lot. This is actually it. So this is the blue for uh, the journalism department color. That's the blue for um, that I use on the journalism department website on jmc.creighton.edu. That's that blue. Um, all right. So do that. Maybe put the hex code in front of it. If you want to, you can make it a little smaller so it's on its own level. Um, but then make sure that you keep your spacings consistent. I wouldn't go. I'm not going to go less than ten. Um, I'm going to drag this one over. Eh, kind of a line there. There, it sort of aligned it. I don't know if you guys saw that. If, it, if you can't get it aligned, just select the two of them. Snap it. Make sure spacing is the same, and then grab your red. It automatically selects that color for you, so you can really just click on the color and hit Command C to copy it. There we go. So there's my primary colors. Now we're gonna do our secondaries. So here's how you know in our here's the next like really important thing in our um, sort of layers list, you know, our organization here. Everything is on the same level. Right? All these items exist independent of each other. Right? They're just arranged together. I do not want that to, to always be the case. Uh, I'm going to make this a little darker. Um, I don't want that to always be the case because um, I want you to, to get used to thinking of things as you're drawing them in terms of the organization you would have in the HTML. You know, so if you're going to be moving things and arranging things on the screen the same way and, you know, in code, um, like together you need to move them, then you need to group them together as a group in Sketch. 
Does that make sense? Like how are we doing flex, right? Like we have certain things we need to group together that need to be parented inside of other things, etc. That's pretty much how I want you to organize your stuff in Sketch. Because then what you're doing with that, the benefit of that is you're, you're already laying out the rough outline of what your HTML is going to be. You just look at your layer organization. So there's your half your work done already, right? So you see how everything sort of is feeding into everything else? So how I would do that. Um, all right, color palette. Uh, let's start at the very base unit. So I've got these labels. I want these labels to be organized with my um, colors here. So I select both of them and hit Command-G to group them and then label it. Um, we'll call it uh, color swatch. We're just thinking in very general terms. So select them both, group, uh, rename the group, color swatch. Now both of these color swatches go with the title primary colors. I'll group them and this is a little more specific. This will be primary colors. Colors. And then color palette and style guide. Well, you could group these two together too. So then this would be color palette. All right, so inside color palette, I now have, that is my HTML structure right there. I'd have one big div, one big section called color palettes. Inside that, there's another section called primary colors, which is gonna have siblings of secondary and tertiary, right? But inside of that, it has two children called color swatch. And inside the that div, I have a label and um, my, my swatch. And you could actually rearrange that order to make it a little closer to what it should be in the HTML. Um, you do this with your organization, and your HTML is like 80% done. Okay, um, At least the structure of it. And you'll get top marks on your style guide from me. This is the ideal. All right, That's what I want you guys to strive for. Also, it makes doing the next part really easy. So I can grab this, hold Option, drag over, pick a uh, amount of space, we're gonna go 50, and then just start changing these characteristics to now make my secondaries, right? So I know that I have, um, and we'll relabel this, second, oh no, that's my primary. I'm gonna move it down. I'm just rearranging things so that they actually are the way they should be in my HTML. Um, primary colors copy is going to be secondary colors. Open that up. You don't have to change these at all, but you will change like the colors. Um, so if you have if you have groups like this, so um, you know when I click on the group, it selects the entire group. If I double click inside, it starts. It goes down folders. Okay. So notice notice over here on my organization. Whoops, that's my email. Um, over here on my my layers list. Um, I don't have anything selected, but I select my color palette, it selects the first folder. If I double click on it, it selects the next folder, the one that's underneath my mouse. Right? So I'm on that next level. If I double click in there, it opens up and expands the next folder. Right? But maybe all I want to do is just grab this label really quick. So if I'm out here, if I hold command, I can grab that label. I can just shoot through all the folders and grab exactly the item that I have my mouse over. Does that make sense to everybody? That will be really useful as you work. So I want to change just the square, so I'm just holding command and selecting the square, opening up my palettes, coming down and grabbing a secondary color. Mm, I really want that to be my secondary color. Eh, not really. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. I like that one better. Uh, right, and I'm what I'm doing for these are just like the complementary colors for it's like blue and orange and red and green because it's easy. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna change this label so command and click to change it, double click on it to go into edit mode, secondary colors. And then I need to change these labels. So Command C, Command click, double click, paste, escape to get out of it. Command click, Command C to copy that. Command double click to go into and edit that label, paste. All right, easy peasy. All right, secondary colors. 
Oh yeah, 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 here we go. Tertiary colors, generally these are going to be like your background, text, and icons. Um, that's not a bad, I should label the uses. Navigation. So let's come back over here, click it in here, double click inside of it to edit it. I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Buttons, links, active states. Links, active states. Although your buttons can also be, you could also have buttons be primary colors too, if it's a primary element, like a link. Um, so I do, oh, I do that. Okay. And then I'm going to make my, I'm just changing the font style here. There we go. Okay. So let me drag out, I think I only get two more squares, so we're going to make them a little smaller. Um, Alright, that's our secondary colors. So I'm going to click and drag over for my um, primary colors. Notice it, I don't know if you noticed that, but watch watch what happens when I, so if I grab secondary colors, hold option to copy it and drag it over. You know, Remember I set up that 50 um, pixel gutter there, when I drag over and holding option it snaps to that 50 like I'm wiggling a little bit on my mouse and it's not moving because it knows that I set up a margin between similar elements over here already so sketches is, can be pretty smart um, okay I'm gonna go ahead and make these a little smaller just the squares though uh, just so I can fit a third in over here These are just my blacks. All right. Um, the reason I didn't scale the text with it is because sometimes it'll make the text really, really small, and you don't want that to happen. Um, three, so ten for that label, and then I do need to pull this one out into its own color swatch folder here in a second. Or zoom in really quick. Ah, yep. Yeah, not. Uh, we're not aligned. Just to make sure I align them. Copy it and come up here. Ah, let's actually just. Oops. Not you. Make sure that you keep your layers organized because when you make copies of things and drag them out, it's going to put it in the original folder that you put it in or that it was in to begin with. So let's color swatch. All right. And then label things appropriately. Copy, paste. So there's something I want you guys to notice really quick. Um, when I double click on this text to edit it, notice how it changes. Like it looks really pixelated right now, right? Doesn't look pixelated anymore, right? Uh, Sketch does this vector switching thing. So right now, when I'm in edit mode, so that I can read it clearly, it scales everything up to like this what what the relev relevant system font would size would be. Um, and but when I get out of it, it's scaling back down to what my document pixel size is because I'm zoomed way in on my document right so it knows that everything is going to be shown as pixels you know because we're building stuff for the web um, so it's showing the font as if it was a pixel image even though it's still an editable font when you click to edit it it turns it back into like a, a vector font All right, it's just something it does to make it easier to read just in case you notice it's happening I don't want you to freak out about it 
All right. Save your document every now and then. It's not a bad idea. So, those are colors. Um, you have active states to do as well. Uh, you know, status changes, so you'll need an active, uh, completed, a pending, an error, and in progress. Um, type, it's pretty self explanatory. Um, the image is on the assignment, so just kind of show you guys how to do this. But you're just going to use the same, um, same thing we did up above. The only thing that is different um, is. Um, that with the body copy I want you to actually add some text in here you don't have to write this stuff but I don't want you to just do lorem ipsum okay there is lorem ipsum built in uh, there was lorem ipsum built in I thought I think you can just type lorem I can't see that Nope, never mind. I thought there was lorem ipsum built in. Never mind, there's no lorem ipsum. Um, I use a plugin to get that stuff, but we're not going to mess with plugins right now. Just find some text online, like, you know, do a search for alternative lorem ipsum. Or grab a paragraph from a font, uh, or from a website. Harry ipsum, there we go. Watch 2.0 or Web 2.0 Ipsum. Oh, that sounds great. That is complete gibberish. Yeah, hip strips, and that's pretty common. Philorama. Oh, this is good. Okay, so like I would take. Like. <laughs> that stuff. Copy it. Come over here. Give yourself fonts. Okay, so notice how it dragged out a big, big line of stuff there. Um, with your body copy stuff, just drag a box to define the bounds, and then paste it in, and that will give you um, that'll give you that nice paragraph size, and then give it, you know, what uh, what your what your two fonts for your your web. The what, what two fonts you want to pick for your web page. They do not have to be the same as the fonts you're using for your style guide labels. So I'm using Open Sans for my style guide labels. On this style guide that I made, where'd it go? Um, I'm using, uh, well, I am using Open Sans, okay. Told you I use it a lot. Um, I'm using Open Sans, and then I picked a, a semi serif, a slab serif. So it's like, um, it's a serif font. It's like a middle middle ground between a serif and a sans serif font. It's a slightly serif sans serif font. Um, so I use Roboto Slab for that. Serif fonts are good for body copy stuff. Like if you have lots of reading to do, use a serif font. Or you have lots of reading you want your users to do, use a serif font. Uh, it's easier to read. It's easier for the eye to, to pick up on and cues and fill it in. Um, it's just much more comfortable. Um, and it's it's always good to have a serif and a sans serif um, choice. Just noticed my headers are wrong. That was weird. These styles that you see over here, um, don't worry about them right now. Uh, we are gonna do this next time. We will get um, those set up. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, is that sans serif? Yeah. Sweet. Um, but I do want that everything to look this way, and then I want you to just keep your layers organized as much as possible. All right. Um, you can take a couple of minutes to mess around. Um, we'll talk about icons on Tuesday. Um, well. I want you to be able to work on it, though. Um, so with the icons, uh, you can really get your icons anywhere. Um, just, you know, website icons. 
What you're looking for, though, are the actual vector icons. So um, I think I was using, I do use Font Awesome quite a bit, but they're not going to just give you the vectors. Um, let's see what flat icon has. Oh, those are gross. Oh, that's where it just was. Jeez. Oh, actually, you know what? Sketch um, resources. Yeah, sketchresources.com. Um, if you go here, and we have sketch. I want. Oh, okay. I just want to search. What's going on? This is terrible. Sketch app resources? Yeah, sketchappresources.com, sorry. I'll put this link in the assignment description. Where is it? Here. Okay, so there's the link in the assignment now. Um, but Sketch App Resources is a great repository. <sighs> did I just close it? I did, didn't I? Oh, there it is. Anyway, it's a good uh, repository for all kinds of things that you need. Um, just do a search for icons. There'll be a bunch of different icon libraries. I think I'm using these UI line icons. No, those look a little different. Minimal rounded feather, nope. 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 I don't know. Pick something in here to use. Um, I would avoid these really um, colorful ones as much as possible. Those are really specific. Uh, I really don't remember which ones I'm using. You use whatever you want to use. You don't have to use the exact same ones I'm using. Might be feather icons, but you just download them, um, and then it should show up as a sketch file uh, or just SVGs, I guess. Yeah, there's the SVGs. Is this? Where's this? Oh yeah, okay. Feather icon sketch file. So you can open that guy and then just copy them, you know, drag and copy the ones you want over, and put them into your document. It's very easy. Okay. Um, and then you just would edit the colors the way you need to or whatever you need. All right? Okay. Does anybody have any questions? No? Do as much work as you can on this um, before Tuesday um, because we have other parts of it to do and to work on. Um, ideally, I would like you to finish it uh, or at least get it, get most everything in here and then I can help you like polish it. Um, but yeah, ideally get it, just get as far as you can. Try to get it completely done. Um, at least get typography done at the very, very least. Okay. Uh, icons will be should be really easy to do. Um, you'll notice I don't have a ton of icons. I think I just did like a hundred. Yeah, it's a, it's just a grid of five by. Five. Oh, I did okay. I did 110. So 110 icons. Not much. You know, just drag a box, make it square, squarish. And then change your colors. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is everyone clear on what you're what you're doing? Ish. Yeah. Good. Okay. All right. Um, so get what you can done on Tuesday. We'll have some time in class on Tuesday to work and troubleshoot as well. Cool. Have a good weekend.